Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's me, Mr. Smeaton, and I'm back. Back from a recovery of a nasty, nasty case of food poisoning. But uh, yeah, we've been doing linear homogenous recurrence relations, and we want to look into the non-homogenous case here. Non-homogenous case here. That's what's different. Uh, so you need to know to, how to do the homogenous type before you can do the non-homogenous. Non-homogenous are a little complex, a lot going on with the non-homogenous situation. So what does a non-homogenous situation look like? I mean, basically, it looks like the homogenous case, right? Homogenous case. Where is that? Uh, let's make it red. Right, so you have a recurrence relation of degree k. So this is called right here, the red part is called the homogeneous part. And then over here in blue, you get this extra function here, right? That's not zero. So when that is not zero, you get what's called a non-homogeneous recurrence relation. So the associated homogeneous part there is the red part. The red part there is, is the associated linear homogeneous recurrence relation. So basically, if you were to make the Fn zero, if you were to make that blue Fn zero on the end, you would get the homogeneous part all by itself. So we call the associated linear homogeneous recurrence relation, we often call that Hn. Hn. So Hn is the, is the associated homogeneous part. So that would just be Hn equals C1, Hn minus 1 plus C2, H minus 2 plus so on and so forth, CKH, N minus K. And I don't even bother putting the blue Fn on the end, right? I don't bother putting Fn because Fn, we just let it be 0. Okay, uh, let me just tell you that your book, rather than calling it Hn, your book calls it Hn, they call it uh, An of H, like that, An of H. I'm going to be using Hn for the homogeneous, associated homogeneous part. All right, let's just do an example so we know what this is talking about here. Example. Ah, uh, let's say I got a n equals two a n minus one minus n plus one. This is a linear non-homogeneous, linear non-homogeneous. Recurrence relation. This sucker won't write. Why is that non-homogeneous? Well, you got this stuff here on the end. Uh, minus n plus 1, right? That's some function of n. It's not 0. Okay. So what would the associated homogeneous recurrence look like? Um, call it hn. Come on, man. Don't do that. So hn equals 2. hn minus 1 is the associated linear homogeneous recurrence relation. Yep, so this guy right here is, yep, I think mean, pretty much the same as that, except we used an H to indicate, okay, it's homogeneous. All right, so just so you can get some terminology down. Oh, here's a big deal. We want to get into what are particular solutions. There's a definition. Mm, a sequence. Call it PN. P sub n is a particular solution. This is going to be a closed sequence, not a recursive sequence. A particular solution to a recursive
sequence or recurrence relation. provided it satisfies. the recurrence relation. Yep. So a particular sequence in closed form is a particular solution to a recurrence relation, provided it satisfies. Satisfies the recurrence relation. Okay, uh, let's just do an example. Or two. Maybe we'll do two examples. Example. Uh, let's show that the sequence p sub n equals n plus 1. Show that that is a particular solution Sucks when your cheap pen does this stuff. Particular solution. Two. The recurrence relation. A n equals two a n minus one minus n plus one. Okay, so our goal is to show that... Um, Pn satisfies this recurrence relation. So we have a recurrence relation in, okay, in yellow. Well, it looks like red, actually. Should have been yellow. So here's our recurrence relation in yellow. And we want to show that P sub n satisfies it. P sub n's in red. And basically, in place of the A sub n's, or the a sub j, let me call these the a sub j's. a sub j's, right, we have a n and a n minus one. The a sub j's, I'm gonna put a p sub j. So let's just say, um, let's start to solve. p sub n equals n plus one is a particular solution. To a sub n equals 2 a sub n minus 1 minus n plus 1. That will be true if and only if I can plug in p sub, n, p sub j's for the a sub j. So in place of a sub n, I'm going to put p sub n equals and then 2 times. In place of a sub n minus 1, I should be able to place p sub n minus 1. Right? And then we got what? Minus n plus 1. Yeah, should I? So I should be able to plug in the, the p sub n's there. Those guys. Those nice, nice dudes, right? So those are where the an's were. And now I put in the, uh, the, I mean the aj's, I should say. The aj's were there, and now I'm putting in the pj's. All right, pajamas. Now, what is Pn? Pn. So I focus on Pn. So it looks like we're dealing with Pn right here. That's just going to be n plus 1, right? I got n plus 1 equals 2 times Pn minus 1. Okay, what's Pn minus 1? Well, we have to remember when we're doing Pn minus 1... We have to put, instead of an n, we're going to put an n minus 1, so we're going to have n minus 1 and n plus 1. All right, because you have the plus 1 here. All right, so that's pn minus 1. We're doing a minus n and then a plus 1. So if we can prove that this is true, then uh, this will, in fact, be a particular solution, right? We just got to show this is satisfied. So what do we got? n plus 1 equals 2 times. Well, the negative 1 and the positive 1 cancel. You get n there minus n plus 1, and you just keep going. This is true. If and only if, you get n plus 1 equals, ah, 2n minus n is going to be n, and then you get a plus 1, which is true. Now that's one way to prove it. I like that way. So what we said is pn is a particular solution to the recurrence relation if and only if 
the uh, recurrence here is satisfied by plugging in PN, and it was, right? It was satisfied. We got N plus 1 equals N plus 1. So that's that. Uh, let's do another example just to get some more practice. What do we want to show next? I got a problem here. Show the closed sequence. One third times five raised to the, let me see, what does it say? It says n plus one. Having trouble reading. Is a particular solution To the recurrence relation, a sub n equals 2 times a sub n minus 1 plus 5 to the n. Okay, so our recursive, you're not supposed to do that, you're supposed to highlight. Our recursive sequence is a sub n, and we want to show that p sub n. I'm going to put this time p sub n in blue. P sub n satisfies it, right? P sub n satisfies it. So, do a little proof here. P sub n, which is equal to 1 third times 5 to the n plus 1, is a particular solution. Two. The recurrence relation a n equals... 2an minus 1 plus 5 to the n. That's true if and only if we can plug in p sub n, or the p sub j's in place of the a sub j's. So in place of these guys, these a j's, we're going to put p j's. So here I'm going to put first p sub n. Then equals 2 p sub n minus 1 plus 5 to the n. All right, so now we're going to figure out what's p sub n. Well, p sub n just means you're going to plug in p sub n, literally. It's going to be, what, 1 third times 5 to the n plus 1. Then that's going to be equal to 2 times p sub n minus 1 is, what is p sub n minus 1? p sub n minus 1 means rather than plugging in an n, you're going to plug in an n minus 1 in place of the n. So you're going to have 1 third times 5 to the n minus 1 plus 1. All right, and then you got what? Plus in red, 5 to the n. So really what happens is the negative 1 and the positive 1 cancel out there, and you just get 5 to the n. Yeah, so basically you lowered your power by 1. So p sub n was supposed to have an n plus 1 power above the 5. p sub n minus 1 is just going to have an n power above the 5. So what do we got? We got uh, this is equivalent to 1 third times 5 to the n plus 1 equals 2 thirds, right? 2 times a third is 2 thirds times 5 to the n plus 5 to the n. All right, now what can we do to simplify this? Now there are a couple of things you could do. I'll show you one way. Nice, clever trick. Um, so you notice you got these geometric terms in there, right? 5 to the n plus 1, 5 to the n, and 5 to the n. What you can do, you can divide uh, everything by the minimal geometric power the minimal geometric power. So here, the smallest power for the geometric is going to be 5 to the n. So we're going to divide everything. Let's use uh, purple. 5 to the n is the minimal power, right? n plus 1 is larger than n, so we're going to do 5 to the n. 5 to the n. 5 to the n. When you do that, you're going to have, what, 1 third. So if you focus on 5 to the n plus 1 divided by 5 to the n, that's just going to give you 5. Right? n plus 1 minus n is 1. So 5 to the 1. You're going to have, what, 2 thirds? The 5 to the n's cancel. Plus 
5 to the n over 5 to the n is going to be 1, right? So you got, this is equivalent to 5 thirds equals, well, 2 thirds plus 1 is 3 over 3. That's going to be equivalent to 5 thirds equals 5 thirds, which is true. So that means the equation is satisfied, which is true. Yep, so that proves it. So p sub n satisfied the recurrence relation because, yeah, we got a legitimate identity down at the very bottom after simplifying. All right, um, yeah, I think that's enough for now. We'll go into actually the forms for finding particular solutions next. Forms for finding particular solutions next.